Thanks. <laughs> After graduating from college, the idea of me babying bok choy and battling cabbage root maggot would have seemed like unfit tasks for an idealistic woman ready to leave her positive mark on the world. But after eight years of working to address social isolation and chronic homelessness in Portland, I somehow came to see organic farming as a potent means to address some major social ills. Now, I'm elated to be a farmer on a mission to make Whidbey a tighter knit and better fed community. <laughs> <laughs> I think the allure of farming hit me subconsciously as a child. My North Dakota grandparents were grain farmers, and I revered them. Nothing was better than riding with Grandpa on his tractor through fields of wheat, picking wildflowers amongst the cattle, and opening Grandma's kitchen drawers filled with pies. Really, there were pies in the kitchen drawers. <laughs> Feeling a connection with the lives they led certainly inspires me now. My parents and North Dakota upbringing drove me to grow not only food, but community as well. North Dakotans are like the Whidbey Islanders I know. They're volunteers, members of countless community groups and clubs, ready to rally when anyone, anywhere needs anything. If someone's distant cousin dies, a train of neighbors will arrive on their doorstep in no time flat. Robert Putnam, in his book Bowling Alone, cites my home state as one of the rare places where social involvement is an on-the-rapid decline. That upbringing set community cohesion as a lifelong goal. But even though I come from the rural land where food and community grow strong, oddly enough, it was working with folks living on the streets of urban Portland that officially led me to farm life. After college, I worked at a nonprofit called JOIN that worked with folks on the streets to get into permanent housing. I coordinated Join's Homeless Drop-In Center, where I became super close with the regulars. One fellow, Mikey, who had been on the streets for over 20 years, came in every day to help me with everything. He once lugged a full-size fridge up a flight of stairs for me single-handedly. I swear, I was begging him to get help. Join helped Mikey get into his own place. But shortly after getting in, he really missed his friends who were still outdoors and continued to spend most of his time out with them. After getting his apartment, Mikey died a few short weeks back on the streets. His housing issues had been addressed, but he didn't have the support he needed to be comfortable within his walls. I spent countless hours talking with our executive director about how housing could have worked for Mikey, absolutely certain no one was destined to live out their days in the harsh elements. He encouraged me to write up a job description focused on helping people keep their housing. The board approved my proposal, and Join's housing retention program was born. As the first housing retention worker, I had the great privilege of talking with people about how they wanted to spend their time now that survival wasn't their sole priority. Most knew they wanted to do a lot more than watch TV all day long, but they just weren't sure what, and they were open to my suggestions. <laughs> so I read countless studies on happiness, searching for ways to help people attain stability and contentment in their new homes. The studies that hit me hardest found that social bonds were the strongest indicators of life satisfaction. So I set out planning events aimed at getting people out of their apartments and out making friends. And it was shockingly easy to get people to do anything that I proposed. <laughs> the pull for social connection overcame their anxiety. I got people to attend trips to the beach and trips to farms, jogging clubs and nature walks, Greek cooking classes, and rowdy jam sessions. I even got 15 formerly homeless guys to take hula hoop lessons with me in a Portland park. <laughs> they let me know that was a one-time deal. <laughs> <laughs> they were all amazing times, but the ones I found to be the most rewarding, the most powerful and bonding were our gatherings around food. Every month, I'd easily pack a 15-passenger van filled with formerly homeless folks eager to volunteer at our local food bank garden, where we'd pick peas, prune fruit trees, and chase chickens. The work resonated with everyone who came. There was Eduardo, who'd been a chef back in Cuba, who positively knew how to best prepare each crop. And Michael, my 350-pound autistic friend, found the work exhausting, but he never missed a garden party, saying he loved the healthy work. 
and Mark, whose anger management struggles meant he had a really tough time keeping friends, well, he treated the tomatoes like newborn babes. We'd close each garden party with a meal together and talk about how great we felt after our time together in the dirt. Now much closer to one another, everyone was wanting more. I help folks get their own community garden plots and start container gardens on their apartment patios. We even busted up a thousand square feet of pavement at the Join Homeless Drop-In Center and started a garden and a small orchard in the former parking lot. This work gave me the garden bug big time. Thankfully, not the aphid type. <laughs> I saw the magic that growing food and sharing in it has on people. I now wanted to spend all of my time working to address social isolation and food access both, and realized I could do so through a farm. Leaving my amazing gig at JOIN was beyond daunting. But luckily, by the time I left, there were four retention workers, so all of my JOIN friends were in lots of good hands. And thankfully, my sweetie Nathaniel was also craving farm life. So we set off from Portland together for the Green Bank Farm Agriculture Training Program, which made farmers out of us in no time. And here we are living our dream. Our Deep Harvest Farm is based on a business model that strives to keep growing food and growing community at the forefront. We're elated to, to partner with nonprofits, Good Cheer Food Bank, and Whidbey Island Nourishes, and look forward to the day when the schools will come visit us on tours and be outlets for local farms' produce. I help Baby Farmers Market get set up to accept food stamps. Please spread the word, tell everyone you know we can accept food stamps at the market. Yay! <laughs> and, <laughs> and we can do so for our farm share program as well. Anyway, I'm absolutely certain that the sharing in nutritious, tasty, local food promotes happiness and promotes health. Let's do more of it together, would be friends. I promise it will be rewarding and delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.